Hey guys, welcome to Skill Link. In real life, we encounter a lot of materials which are used in a wide range of applications. The most common example is steel, an alloy of iron, which is widely used today. As we know, steel is used for making cars, appliances, heavy machinery, and much more. But do you wonder how this is possible? How can we apply one material to such a wide range of applications? Well, in today's video, we will discuss a process which is used to alter the properties of a material and make it available for a wider range of applications. We're talking about heat treatment. It is a process of altering the physical and chemical properties of a material. It involves the use of heating or cooling in order to achieve a desired result, such as hardening or softening of the material. These heating and cooling processes are usually done at extreme temperatures. The term heat treatment is applied only to the processes where heating and cooling are done with the intention of altering the properties. Heat treatment is performed on a material for increasing its ductility, relieving internal stresses, hardening and strengthening it, refining the grain size, improving its machinability, and for improving its electrical and magnetic properties. The process of heat treatment consists of three stages. In the first stage, the material is heated to a specific temperature. Then in the second stage, the material is held at that temperature for a specific amount of time. Finally, in the third stage, the heated material is cooled down using a specified process. There are several types of heat treatment processes. These types are annealing, normalizing, hardening, tempering, case hardening, and surface hardening. In this video, we will talk about the first type of heat treatment, which is annealing. Annealing is a process in which the material is heated to a specified temperature, holding it at that temperature, and then finally cooling it down at a very slow rate. This heat treatment process is affected by the temperature to which the material is heated, the time period during which the material is held at that temperature, and the size and shape of the material. The purpose of annealing is to relieve the internal stresses acting in the material, to refine the grain size, to obtain homogeneity in the chemical composition of the material, and to prepare a steel which is more suitable for further processes like hardening. Besides these, an important purpose of annealing is to reduce the hardness of the material, which in turn increases its ductility. As we know, everything has one classification or the other, right? Well, the same goes for annealing. The process of annealing is classified into four main types, namely full annealing, stress relief, recrystallization, and spheroidizing. In full annealing, the material is heated to a temperature higher than 1000 Kelvin or 727 degrees Celsius. The material is then held or soaked at this temperature for some time. After this, it is allowed to cool down to room temperature. Using this process, a very ductile material can be obtained. Full annealing is done to obtain a uniform and stable microstructure and allow the material to have lower hardness and yield strength, and hence a high ductility and toughness. Now let's move on to our next type of annealing, which is the stress relief process. In this annealing process, the material is heated to a temperature lower than the transformation temperature and then cooled down slowly. This process is done for reducing the internal stresses without intentionally changing its structure. In this process, cold worked steel is heated to 500 to 550 degrees Celsius, which is right below the recrystallization temperature. On the other hand, plain carbon and low alloy steel are heated to 450 to 650 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, hot working steel and high speed steel are heated to 600 to 750 degrees Celsius. When the internal stresses are relieved, the material may warp. To avoid this, machining allowances are necessary. Earlier, we mentioned transformation temperature and recrystallization temperature, right? Do you know what they mean? Well, 
Transformation temperature is a temperature at which a material undergoes phase transformation from one phase to another. On the other hand, recrystallization temperature is the minimum temperature required for the recrystallization process to occur. Recrystallization is a process in which the deformed grains of a crystal structure are replaced by new grains which do not contain any defects. We know that the stress relief is done below the recrystallization temperature, right? Well, there is another type of annealing process which takes place above the recrystallization temperature. This process is known as recrystallization annealing or process annealing. The material is held at a temperature higher than recrystallization temperature and then cooled down. This process is done for reducing the hardness and increasing the ductility of cold worked steel so that it can be sent for further machining processes. In this process, recrystallization occurs which result in distorted cold worked grains being replaced by free grains of cold worked steel. Now let's move on to the final topic of this video which is spheroidizing annealing. As we know, high carbon steel has cementite and ferrite in its structure. Cementite is very hard and brittle and has a plate-like structure. This structure is difficult to cut using cutting tools. To make cementite more machinable, spheroidizing process is done. This process softens the high carbon steel, hence improving its machinability. As you can see, the microstructure obtained after performing this heat treatment consists of globules of cementites or carbides in a ferrite matrix. But how does spheroidizing make the high carbon steel more machinable? Well, you'll know the answer now. When spheroidizing is done, the hard constituents of high carbon steel like perlite, bainite and martensite are turned into a structure of spheroidized carbides in a ferrite matrix. Hence, a soft structure is obtained which makes the material more machinable. Spheroidizing is done by prolonged heating of the steel at a temperature just below its lower critical temperature, which is the minimum temperature required to obtain austenite. Another way of performing this process is by heating and cooling the material alternatively between temperatures just above and below the lower critical temperature. Besides these, Spheroidizing can also be done by heating the material to a temperature above the lower critical temperature and then cooling it very slowly. This cooling process can be done either inside the furnace itself or by holding it at a temperature just below the lower critical temperature. We will discuss terms like lower critical temperatures in our upcoming videos on iron carbon diagrams. Well, that's all for today. In this video, we talked about heat treatment and delved into annealing and its major types. In our upcoming videos, we will cover more topics on heat treatment. This is Skilllink and we'll see you on our next video. Bye!